Well, I'm sitting in front of this aquarium, which uh, has our sweet potatoes in it, and it looks like the light isn't on. But uh, we may have found the single best way to sprout sweet potatoes as far as growing extremely vigorous slips. And we're going to show you what we mean here in a second. So in our last video on starting sweet potato slips, we tried a bit of an experiment. Previous years, we've always started them in water, in jars, usually behind the wood stove where it's warmer. We also have tried them in the dirt, but we got thinking, well, if they start relatively well in water and they like heat, why not use an aquarium? And as you can see from the roots, it's working. It's potentially working a little too well. It's been about two weeks since we posted our last video, and at the end of that video, we had some substantial growth. But two weeks later, we may have created a monster. So as you can see, the guppies and platies that we're using for this experiment have absolutely no problem with the uh, overgrowth of sweet potato roots that are uh, invading their aquarium. This side in particular is uh, quite monstrous. But we'll take you up and show you what it looks like above water. And this is the problem. Is the monsters. If you remember correctly, there was three pots of tubers that went in here. They are completely out of control. And this is in about a two week time frame, which is crazy. We've never seen this kind of growth uh, starting sweet potatoes any other way. It's in there. There it is. One on the side. So today's job, before we take any slips off this, is going to be to try to remove at least one of these pots so that we actually have somewhere to, uh, to work. So we've pulled the vines out of the one side here and we've actually got some light penetration now. But as you can see, this just is quite a monster. So this pot we're going to take out, see what we're working with and uh, try to take some slips off of. And we even have continued growth in here that hasn't seen the light of day from these other varieties. So we have some work to do as far as uh, starting some slips. An interesting side effect of this is potentially this is a legitimate way to grow sweet potato greens relatively quickly indoors in sort of a controlled environment because uh, that Growing is, them to eat. Like yeah for human uh, consumption because that is a lot of greens. We will say too because we don't have enough height here above the aquarium we didn't really think they would become this big of a monster so quickly. We do have some uh, dieback, basically where the plant was kind of right up against the lights. And uh, it is what it is. We will be able to work with that. So conveniently, we have another aquarium set up with guppies and platies. And uh, we're going to see how we manage here with transferring this monster to this tank. So let's see. Chris put it in there. Look at the root on it. On this. Uh, sweet potato. So that is a lot of potato greens. Whoever would have thought growing sweet potatoes aquaponically would uh, yield so much green. So we're back in the main tank at the moment and we've just sort of separated these out but you can already see here these basically where you're getting some pretty vigorous growth, we can uh, start separating those out at any point here and you're already getting root hairs coming. Like the vigor on these is insane. We're going to have to figure out where we're putting all of these sweet potato slips because we didn't think they were going to uh, do this this quickly. Bit of an added bonus to this particular assortment of fish. They all eat squash. So squash can even help fuel your uh, aquaponic endeavors with these uh, vegetarian and omnivorous fish species. So that lets a little more light penetration into the tank. We're going to, for tonight, we're just going to leave it like this with uh, these last two remaining pots on either end. We were going to take some slips off them, but we think we're going to wait until we get something sorted out in the grow room a little bit because space is always that uh, thing that's running in... Uh, 
small availability, I suppose. All in all, this has been an excellent uh, proof of concept. If you look really closely in that little divot there, there's a baby bushy-nosed placostomus as well. So uh, this is the first time we've actually found any baby ones, so which is pretty cool. This is the second one. We've found two in here so far. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. As I say, this is kind of a proof of concept that uh, in a very short period of time has given crazy results. Very curious to try this with some other species because what we have been finding using the guppies, the platies, and the bushy-nosed placostomus, they don't eat the sweet potatoes. Now, I don't know if that's going to be the case for every species, but if we can do this with things like maybe celery or uh, lettuce and maybe scale this up a little bit, uh, this is potentially an economical way to not only grow sort of food aquaponically indoors in Canada where yes these are not fish that are uh, sort of human edible but there could be some end uses for them but we'll we'll come back to that later but for now the sweet potato grow experiment has to date at least been working amazingly so if you want to give growing sweet potatoes a try and potentially have a spare aquarium, definitely something I would suggest because this has been very, very simple and very, very productive. So an obvious big question here is why not fish that we could eat? And I guess there's a couple reasons for that. First reason, I don't think most species that we could grow as food fish, i.e. things like tilapia, really could be grown in water with the plants, i.e. the deep water culture. So that's definitely a consideration. Another is availability. Guppies, platies, bushy-nosed placosmus, those are all readily available fish. They're also all quite small, so although that limits their use from a food value, or for human food value, that uh, makes them a heck of a lot easier to house if you have to house them indoors. Uh, a downside is they are tropical or they do require heating but I suppose in a way that's offset by the growth we get from the plants so kind of using the system for dual purpose sort of offsets that a little bit. I suppose more specifically here why these particular fish both guppies and platies are live bears and although oftentimes an overabundance of offspring is considered a negative. For us, that's actually considered a positive because they're not fish that produce a large amount of waste, uh, which is why you can have quite a bit of biomass in a given space. They also are fish that do well in the water that we have, so our well water suits them quite well. They do really well with what most people would consider sort of quote-unquote hard water. And of course our water is high in minerals, i.e. hard. So a lot of fish species that prefer sort of softer or more acidic water don't do fantastic. So these basically just work well. They're easy and uh, it's kind of like gardening. They're something that just wants to uh, reproduce and, and uh, grow for you. The other thing in particular when, when kind of comparing them to tilapia is because they don't produce a, a huge amount of waste, you're less likely to get into trouble with your system on a smaller scale. Uh, keeping in mind, tilapia are a lot bigger and uh, they do produce a lot more babies, which is a lot more biomass. And uh, that can take a lot more management. And frankly, it takes a lot more space to house those fish, those bigger fish. So. This is definitely a viable option for small-scale production and uh, I think we've kind of proven that with the vigor of these sweet potatoes. The other part with this particular species selection with the uh, the guppies and the platies in particular you could use other live bearing fish. Uh, there are things like mollies. We just picked these because a the guppies were readily available quite easy to get a hold of and we were lucky enough to be able to get some locally, which I think is a big, uh, a big factor, getting guppies that are uh, sort of bred in your local conditions. And the platies essentially are potentially redundant. They're not really required, but they're pretty, and they add sort of color to the tank. So this still has a functional aesthetic value for us, as uh, well as their practical attributes. So kind of a good. Uh, a good mix all rolled into one. 